Table tennis is the quickest sport. According to some real life data that were collected, the time between your opponent contacts the ball and you contact the ball is always less than 0.5 seconds, which means you have less than one second to adjust after you hit the ball and until the next ball comes to you. The time difference between a professional player and an amateur player is not that much, usually only 0.1, 0.2 seconds. If you are an amateur player right now, if you save that 0.1 second of time, then you can become a professional. It's all about time, how efficient you can be in that 0.5.4 second of time. And thus, I have concluded the five points you should follow when you're doing a table tennis stroke. And once you've missed the ball, you can always come back to these five points and see which one you're not fulfilling. And also, every time before you play, you can always review these five points. And just give it a try maybe for a month and you can see how fast you can actually improve. But that's why hopefully you won't be making excuses like Rubber too old! Net too high! Table too dirty! Light too bright! Too dark! Ball no bounce! There's a saying that 70% of table tennis is about your legs and 30% is about your hands. Do not save the time. Always keep your center of gravity low. Don't go up until the ball hits the ground. Wherever the ball lands, you always have to find an optimal position where the ball is in front of your chest. To try this, ignore your hands and always move your legs first. I know it could be really uncomfortable at first, but and as you get used to it, it will help you a lot. Meanwhile, lean forward so that the center of gravity is low in front of you so you can approach the coming ball and you can have more power instead of sitting back, which will cause you to miss the ball. Again, I think footwork always comes first and I will be elaborating on the different kinds of footwork after I finish these 5 points at the end of this video. Second point, ask yourself, am I anticipating the ball? So from the moment your opponent contacts the ball, you your eyes have to focus on that ball and then you have to start judging the ball so you shouldn't be looking at anything else not, not your opponent, not the table but your eyes should be fixed on the ball and during that time you need to predict its speed, its spin and its placement once it hits your side of the table and within that 0.1 to 0.5 second you need to come up with a solution how you're going to hit the ball and meanwhile you have to move your feet point number three Ask yourself, am I using my whole body? Have you ever wondered why those um, 8 year old kid can hit a more powerful shot than you can? Well, it's because they produce a greater torque. In physics, torque is defined as the cross product of F and R, the force and the radius, the distance. And apparently, it's not because the kid can produce more force, it's because they are using their whole body. So, using their body as a rotational axis, this distance from um, your racket to the center of the rotational axis is greater. Compared to amateur players, they only use their arms, so this distance is only this much. And even though you produce a greater force, your ball is still slow. So now you need to understand power transfer. So the power comes from the ground. You thrust your leg against the ground, and the power comes um, from your toe, and then transfers through your ankle, and then your knees, your legs, and into your waist. Then you know, you're rotating your waist, so this thing keeps transferring through your body and then your shoulder, your arm, your elbow, and your forearm, and then your wrist, your fingers. So at the end, you should use your fingers to transfer power into your ball. So it's about your index finger. You need to press the racket to go forward. This whole process should happen also at the same time. Some people think, oh, transferring power, oh, is it, oh, this whole thing. No. You should be working at the same time towards the same direction. So it's one smooth action. Okay. So here I want to make an analogy between table tennis and uh, boxing or just punching. When you want to punch someone, you're not gonna just stand here and only use your arm or using your body like this. Still, so power transfers from the leg, but your whole body has to be coordinated. Just try this to get a sense of the feeling when you're most comfortable hitting people. Fourth point. Ask yourself, 
is your power focused? So you know you have to use power trends when your whole body needs to be relaxed before that. You should only explode your power at the point where you contact the ball. So you need to accelerate and contract your forearm quickly at that one point. And then after you finish that, you have to break, you have to stop there. Again, the analogy of punching. You can bring one punch on You're gonna concentrate all your power onto that one target. You're not gonna be tensed up and use up all your energy before you're hitting the target. So you need to be relaxed first and then concentrate all your power on that one point. And that's why we tighten the grip once we contact the ball. And after that, you need to stop. And it's intuitive that you're not going to go all the way through because that's gonna make your power disperse. Point number five. Ask yourself, am I resetting correctly or am I just taking a picture? So after you execute a shot, you should not be concerned with if the ball landed or not. You should always skip a step and return to a ready position. And this skip is so important. So after every time you hit a shot, you skip in order to regain balance and also to relax your body. So you're ready for the next shot and it saves you time. And meanwhile, you should be focusing on how the opponent returns the ball. And you need to, again, anticipate the ball. Now, think about those five points when you're training or play, so it becomes a habit. And then you can add variations on top of that by adjusting your brushing versus hitting. And that's where all the techniques come from. And your success rate is just a probability. And different techniques have different difficulties and corresponding risks. So when you're practicing, find the optimal hitting versus brushing ratio for each technique and encode that into your muscle memory. This is also why we do multi-ball training. It's not just standing there and then getting the feeling of the ball. But most importantly, it's about your footwork. So now I want to briefly go over the different kinds of footwork. I'll start with the simplest, the single step, which means you're fixing one foot and then you're moving the other. It usually happens when we're playing backhand or when we're blocking or when the ball is inside the table. But when the ball is further away, we need the side shuffle, which is a, you're closing the gap between our two feet, and then you're moving another foot. So to the right, it's like this. To the left, it's like this. Just smooth motion like this. But as the speed increases, we find this is not fast enough. So we develop a new one. It's kind of like this side shuffle when you're jumping your two feet at the same time. So, so it's much faster. And this is the most frequently used for the table tennis. And now when the ball is wider, you can move there within one or two jump shuffles. Then you need to do a crossover. This is the most complex out of all the four parts. Um, so when the ball goes that way, I need to cross my left leg in front of my right. And then I need to execute the shot before or when my left foot lands, so at this moment. And then afterwards, my right leg has to go over. And this is not when you contact the ball. This is when you thrust your right leg and return to a ready position. So first you thrust your left leg and then right leg, thrust and then jump over. And then you return. So in a smooth action, it should look like this. So if the ball's over there, then I need to do this. this now that you need to rotate your body all the way over when you hit the ball. So like this. And then turn. So try not to lean forward too much. Like this. Try to keep it straight. And then return. Almost forgot there's one other foot step. It's called um, the split step, or you can call it the small quick steps. This one's crucial because it links all your other footworks together. This is you're using all the time since the game starts. So it looks like something like this. So it's small little adjustments. Although it looks small, but makes big difference. Because sometimes when you do a side shuffle or jump step, you're not exactly in position. So you need the little adjustment. So it's not like you move and then you stop here, and then you move again, you stop here. But you're Doing this. Here, Chang Jiko serves, then jumps back to ready position. They both step into the table using single step. 
And here notice how low my own center of gravity is. During this rally, they skip after every shot. Zhang Jiko is using split step to make slight adjustments of his position. Zhang Jiko uses side shuffle to move to the right. Malone uses crossover to come to the right and up to the table. And Malone uses jump step to pivot for his forehand. Crossover, crossover, then the crossover moves back using side shuffle. So remember those five points and you become a professional in no time. Thanks for watching. Bonus! One effective way to practice set shuffle with yourself is See how fast you can go. Also, another effective way to practice uh, your waist rotation is to do this. Stand in front of the net post and then try to touch the table. As fast as possible. So you can do like 40 in a set, 